Hello, my name is Whitney and I'm with the Meridian Library District. Um, you may recognize me from Outreach and the Bookmobile. Um, I know you've already met my other co-workers Maria and Gabby for Book Talks and I'm really excited that it's my turn. Um, I'm actually going to highlight all graphic novel middle grade reads today. Um, so let's get started. Our first book is called Guts by Rihanna Tablemeyer. Um, and Guts is part of a series. You may have heard of some of her other ones like Smile and Sisters. And um, Rihanna Tagemeyer writes all these books based on her childhood. Um, so these are kind of like memoirs and what she kind of went through in her experiences as a child, which I think is really cool. And um, Guts falls when Rihanna wakes up one day with a terrible stomach ache. And so does her mother. So they just think it's a nasty stomach flu. Um, it only lasts for a little bit and then eventually Rihanna goes back to school and she gets to deal with like the highs and lows of middle school with friendships and you know puberty and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but it's not long before her stomach ache comes back um, and she's not sure why. She starts to get anxiety about getting sick. She doesn't want to get sick. She doesn't want to vomit. She hates going to the bathroom now. Um, but it's not long until she does make the connection that she's getting sick because of her worries from school or worries from home. She has a big presentation that she has to do with her friend Jane, and that gives her a lot of anxiety. And then she realizes that makes her get really sick to her stomach. And so she realizes it's more than just the stomach flu that's going around with her. And this book kind of follows which, how she figures out what's going on and then how she deals with it. Um, it's really fun. There's a lot of funny moments in this book as well. Um, what I really like about it is it is based on true story from Raina Telgar Meyer's life. I think that's really cool that she does that. Um, I also really like that it highlights mental health, um, which is not a topic you always hear about from middle grade reads. Um, but I think it's important because middle schoolers do go through some mental health issues where they feel anxiety and they're not sure why. So I think it's important to highlight that kind of stuff. Um, and then it's also like Rihanna as a character is very relatable. Um, she deals with like typical middle school, like um, dealing with the puberty and stuff, which she thinks is really gross to talk about. But um, I think that's super relatable and I think it's relatable to get super nervous about school projects and stuff like that. So um, I do recommend it. Check it out. I think it's a great read. So now we're going to move on to our next book. Um, it's I'm really excited about this one. It's called Snapdragon by Kat Leah. You can see it here. Um, sometimes you make friends in the most unlikely places, and that's true for Snapdragon. Um, Snapdragon has a hard time making friends at school. She's um, very different. She likes horror movies and creepy things, and she loves to talk about it. And no one at her school really likes to do that either, so they kind of make fun of her and they bully her. So as a result, she doesn't have many friends. Um, the only friend she does have is her dog named Good Boy. Uh, one day Good Boy goes missing though, and Snapdragon looks all over town and can't find him. So then she comes to the only conclusion is that the witch, the town witch, has him. And she lives at the edge of town in a really creepy old house and everyone sees her in like all black. She's not very friendly, so Snapdragon bravely marches right up to her house and demands that she has her dog back. Um, the witch, whose name is Jack, she says, yeah, I do have your dog. Um, and so Snapdragon takes Good Boy and realizes that Good Boy is missing an arm. And she immediately accuses Jack's uh, wrongdoings that you tried to hurt my dog or eat my dog. And Jax defends herself and says, I found him and his arm was hurt and I had to like take care of it or he wasn't going to make it. Um, Snapdragon doesn't quite believe her and takes um, Good Boy back home. Um, after a few days though, she does realize that Good Boy is actually fine, that he seems healthy and there's nothing wrong with him. Um, so she realized she was mistaken. She might have jumped to conclusions about Jax, the town witch. Um, and she's actually very curious about horror and scary things. So obviously she's kind of fascinated that Jax is a witch. So she actually goes back and wants to learn more about her life. And then in the process of this, they become friends and, you know, they learn a lot from each other. So this book is really about friendship and how you can make friends older, younger, and that kind of stuff. And that's super, super fun. What I also really like about this book is it's full of diverse characters, lots of diversity. Um, there's a lot of characters from different backgrounds and ethnicities and different lifestyles. And I think that's always fun to read about that, especially if it's different from your own. I also really like the magic aspect. I like fantasy. I like magic. So that's really fun. And this kind of does it in a different way and lighthearted. And I think it's really cool how they portray ma magic, you know, in the story. And also friendships, you know, it's really about friendships, not just between Jax and Snapdragon. It's about friendships um, within their community, about other people who are feeling 
out of sorts and not belonging and there's a lot of other friendships to develop in the story as well so I think it's a really good read I really like it too because of the graphics and the pictures I think they're really like just cool like the colors are super saturated and just jump out at you so it's definitely one I recommend checking out so our third one and our last one um, but not least is called White Bird by J.R. Placeo and you might have heard of him he wrote Wonder um, it's not like a sequel to Wonder or a prequel, but it does follow, if you know Julian in Wonder, he was actually the classroom bully to Augie. And this kind of follows, uh, Julian has to write a report about someone that he admires, and he chooses his grandmother, Sarah. And specifically, he wants to ask his grandmother about her experiences as a child in World War II in France um, during the Nazi invasions and um, kind of what that was like for her as a Jewish woman. And so this kind of covers like Sarah talking about her life. She starts it off by saying she had a really happy childhood. You know, her dog, her dad always called her like a bird and she compared herself to like a bird all free and carefree and didn't have a lot of worries in her life. Um, but soon, you know, the Nazis invaded France. And at first her family's not too concerned about it. Um, her dad's a doctor and her mother is actually educated. She went to college and she's a teacher. So in their heads, they just didn't think it would get as bad as other parts of Europe. Um, but soon that changes. They start to see um, posters, anti-Jewish posters pop up. And then eventually like establishments like coffee shops and bookstores are not preventing Jewish people from coming in. There's a part where Sarah has to like wait outside while her non-Jewish friends go in to um, buy stuff at a store because she's not allowed to go. And um, one day, a bunch of Nazis actually come to her school to collect all the Jewish children and take them away. While well, her teacher discovers this is happening and she is also Jewish, so her and the principal decide to try to like sneak the children out. Um, Sarah is too afraid to go, so she actually goes and hides in her school um, while all the other Jewish children are collected up and try to get away. Um, unfortunately, they are captured um, by some of the Nazi soldiers and they realize they're missing some Jewish children. They have like a list and they realize that she's not on it as well as a couple of others. So they go back into school to search for them. And obviously Sarah is there. So she kind of panics. She doesn't know what to do, where to hide. And that's when um, Julian, a boy in her class, shows up and says that he can help her. He's going to get her out. Um, and when we first meet Julian in the story, he actually had polio as a child. So he walks around with crutches and he's actually made fun of a lot in the book because of that, um, his disability. Um, but Julian says he'll help Sarah and he takes her through the school and their sewer system and takes her to his house um, and hides her in his barn, actually. And Sarah's obviously very freaked out and um, doesn't know what to do, doesn't know what happened to her parents, what's going on. Um, but Julian reassures her that he, she is safe there. He'll take care of her as well as his parents. His parents actually come in and they play a big role in helping her as well. And so the book basically covers her life in the barn, like the isolation that she goes through and kind of just her experience and her worries and stuff. And it does cover like their um, blooming friendship. You know, Julian's kind of the only one she gets to talk to besides his parents once in a while. And so they develop this big old friendship and kind of understanding about where they're coming from, how Julian was bullied and how then, you know, Sarah was bullied because she was Jewish. And so they kind of connect on that too. And they connect on a lot of deeper levels, but that's kind of what the book covers. And I think it's a really good re representation of what World War II was like and some experience that people actually had. Um, and kind of towards the end, she tells, um, Sarah tells Julian, her grandson in the future, that's actually who she named him after with Julian, the boy that saved her. Um, she kind of tells him that it takes courage to be kind, and especially back in them, in those days, um, it was, you were risking your life being kind to someone who was Jewish, you know, it meant more, um, it was a big sacrifice, and she kind of explains to Julian that that's still really important, and to know when you're being kind, you might have to make that big sacrifice um, for yourself, and that's the right thing to do, especially since she says she doesn't want it to repeat, she doesn't want history to repeat itself, so she kind of, like, um, nails that home for Julian, that, you know, always being kind, although it might take courage and it's very difficult, it's always worth it in the end, so, um, you know, and Julian expresses how he felt bad about bullying Augie and that kind of stuff, and, um, there's still a lot of really good stuff that I didn't reveal and talk about, if you want to know kind of what happens to Sarah, you know, um, 
where her family goes, what happens after that, what happens to Julian in the book. Um, please check it out. It's really good. I really liked it. It's kind of one of my favorite reads so far for the summer. And that's the last one I have. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Those books you can find at the Meridian Library District, so you can put them on hold. Um, and I encourage you to do so if you want to read them. Also, um, if you really like them and there's one that you really want to read, like let me know down in the comments. Um, or if you just want to share something else you've read so far for the summer, you can leave a comment below as well. Um, so thank you again for joining me, and I hope to see you guys next time really, really soon. Thanks. Bye.